Good afternoon, Yelp students. Um, we are excited to host the Professionals by Pathway Career Exploration event to help students connect their learning to career opportunities. I am Scala Myers, and I'm excited to welcome Jeanette Dorner um, as our guest today. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that this is being recorded so future students can benefit from our speakers. Um, we have the next 30 minutes to learn about this career field education that is needed to enter and grow within the industry and what advice or speaker has for our students. Um, I will be moderating, moderating uh, any questions that students may submit. Let's get started so our students can learn about various professions and learn how they can prepare for their future. So Jeanette, can you tell us about your career field and how you get started, the growth opportunities, the pay and more? Sure. So Skylar, I was thinking I would put do my presentation to give people context about what we what we do and then talk about that in the in the presentation. Does that work for you or do you want to talk a little bit ahead of time? Um let's just let's see that PowerPoint. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. Skylar, does that look okay? okay. Looks good. Okay, excellent. So my name again is Jeanette Dorner and I serve as the executive director of a nonprofit that works in the Nisqually watershed, which includes the Elm area. We're called the Nisqually Land Trust. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about our organization and the type of work that we do and some of the folks that we work with and use that as context for to kind of help you guys think about what kinds of careers are available. And these are careers that are available in your home territory. The, we work in your backyard. And so, um, so it's kind of fun uh, to see these kinds of opportunities. So our mission at, at the Land Trust is to acquire lands, buy lands that are important for habitat wildlife people to benefit water, wildlife, and people in the Nisqually River watershed. So if you're not familiar with the watershed, this is a map that shows the boundaries of the Nisqually River watershed, all the water that falls on the ground that flows eventually into the Nisqually River across the land. Our headwaters are up at Mount Rainier National Park, where the Nisqually Glacier is the headwaters of the river. And then it flows all the way down to the mouth of the river as it enters Puget Sound at the Billy Frank Jr. Nisqually National Wildlife Refuge. And hopefully some of you guys have been to either one or both of those beautiful places. So we work in between those two uh, and we work with partners, uh, lots of different organizations to do the kind of work that we do to protect these lands and also to help restore their health where they have been uh, damaged over time. And so we work with federal, state, local governments. We work with other nonprofits, um, conservation districts, and especially with the Nisqually Indian tribe who, um, who work very closely with all of us to help us with uh, management of the watershed and uh, taking care of the important fish and wildlife species that, that live in this watershed. So we have three main priorities that we work on in the land trust. We have in the main area of the Nisqually watershed, we have, we work on salmon recovery primarily. And so we look for places where we can buy land to protect and to restore habitat for salmon so that there continue to be salmon in the Nisqually River and in the watershed. And that's this yellow area in the map. We also work up in the upper watershed where salmon don't get to, but there's still really important forests in the upper watershed. And so we work to protect those forests as well because those are important for the health of the watershed and also for other endangered species like spotted owls and marbled murrelets. And then down after the river runs into Puget Sound, we also work in the south area of Puget Sound and we work to protect marine shorelines because those are also really important habitat for uh, fish and um, other aquatic creatures. So those are our focus areas. That's where we do our work. And we have existed for uh, just over 30 years. And you can see in this chart uh, how much land we have been acquiring. So. Um, you know, when we got started, we didn't have that many acres, but now over time we have over 7,500 acres, over 7,800 acres that we are, we own 
and we are taking care of to restore where we need to restore or just protect um, those values um, for habitat and for people. So this is a map that shows the blue areas are all the lands that we currently own and manage. So you'll see like a big block up here, this forest land that's just outside of Mount Rainier National Park. And then these blue um, pieces along here are along some of the important salmon streams and then along the Nisqually River. So these are all lands that we've acquired and now we're managing them to um, take care of them. So that's kind of what our job is. And here's a picture of one of the lands that we just acquired on the Nisqually River. You can see this is a really nice intact forest. And one of the important things for the river is that um, a lot of times when people live close to the river, then um, they can be at risk if the river is migrating back and forth in its floodplain. And rivers naturally do move back and forth during flood events. They will change where the channel is. And if there's somebody with a house right on the edge, then that can be a problem if the river decides to move in your house. And so what, sometimes what we do is we buy properties from people that realize that maybe they're living too close to the river and it's not safe for them. And then we also buy land that hasn't been developed so we can protect those forests and we can allow the river to do its natural thing, which actually creates really important habitat for fish. And you can see off in the distance in this picture that there's a little open area here. And this is land that we had bought a few years ago. And these little tiny green things are new trees that are growing where we've replanted the forest along the river. And so um, over time, we're hoping that that will grow up into a mature forest that will help take care of the river and provide habitat. All right, let me see, here we go. And some photos of the river on this um, property that we just acquired to show you that natural mm -hmm. habitat. And it's not just for fish, there's elk that live out there. So there's other types of wildlife as well. So this is, you know, we were taking care of salmon, but we're also taking care of all of the habitats. And these are the people that work for the land trust. Um, so this is my team. And uh, so we have different types of jobs at the land trust. So we have some people who are working on buying the properties uh, and they are expert in, um, in real estate uh, transactions and negotiations. But then we also have people who are experts in stewardship in restoration and biology and taking care of the lands and knowing like what kind of plants we need to plant to restore areas. So we have um, a job called a land steward who is somebody that's accountable for taking care of all the lands that we own and making sure that they're maintained and organizing volunteer events for, for um, tree plantings and removing invasive species and that kind of thing. We also have um, this person here does our outreach and communication work. So she helps to educate the community and engage them in our work. Um, she does a newsletter. She um, helps with organizing nature walks where people can come out and visit our properties and learn about them. Um, and then this one, this woman here, she's an AmeriCorps volunteer. And so this is something for those of you that think that this might be a fun thing for you to think about as a future career. A lot of the people that end up working uh, in our programs start out as AmeriCorps volunteers. So this is a program that's available to people, um, young people um, after they've finished uh, college, a lot of times is when they'll um, sign up for AmeriCorps and it's a one year opportunity to work uh, in a nonprofit and get some experience and, uh, and help out. And so actually, this person here who uh, is our land steward, she was originally a AmeriCorps volunteer with our organization. And then this person here who is her assistant was also a AmeriCorps volunteer that ended up then moving into the assistant position. So that's a, a really great tip in terms of if you're interested in getting experience, that's one way to do it is to find these programs where you can volunteer or this is actually a paid um, uh, position for the year. Um, so I'm calling it a volunteer, but it's actually a paid um, one year uh, program. Um, so let me keep going here. 
Um, so this is our, one of our land steward assistants. And one of the things that we do is um, we need them to go and check on all of our properties. They do an annual assessment. So she's got an iPad in her hand and she's taking pictures. She's taking notes as she's walking around the entire property. This is a property that we own on Anderson Island in South Puget Sound. And she was doing the annual assessment out there. We also, as I mentioned, we organize tree planting. So we bring people in from the community to help us plant trees where we need to restore the forests. And so our team is doing a lot of work designing those projects, writing grants to get money to pay for the projects, um, and then figuring out what kinds of native trees and shrubs are going to work at that particular site, ordering them, and then working with people to get them planted. And then we have to take care of them afterwards. And this, I thought this would be fun. This is actually a Girl Scout troop from Yelm that partnered with us a couple of years ago. This is one of our properties that's actually in Yelm on the river. And they helped organize people to plant trees on one of our properties. It was a really great partnership. So we also, in addition to planting trees, we also do more major restoration projects. So this is a creek called Ohop Creek which is on the Pierce County side of our watershed up near Eatonville. And Ohop Creek runs through this wide valley. And about 100 years ago, when people, um, settlers were moving into the valley and kind of changing the, the traditional management that the tribe had, had um, managed the creek for, for thousands of years, um, they cleared the valley floor and then they moved the creek into a ditch alongside the side of the valley floor so that they could use the main area for farming. And that worked for a little while. There were farms up and down this valley, but it was a very wet valley. There's lots of springs coming in. And so it actually wasn't really great for farming and it was terrible for the salmon. It actually completely changed their habitat and made it a lot harder for them to survive. Creeks are much better when they're meandering back and forth in the floodplain rather than in a really deep, long ditch. And so they were the water temperatures were too high and there was a lot of sediment in the creek, unnatural sediment. And so we started working with people in the valley as farmers um, decided that they no longer wanted to farm. The land trust bought the properties. And then we partnered with other organizations that helped us to restore the creek. And so this is a big restoration project. So this is another type of job that you can have is to work on designing stream restoration projects where you work with engineers. There's stream engineers who um, look at the creek um, from an engineering perspective and understand the flows and can do design work. And then um, we hired um, actual construction companies with excavators who actually dug up the the channel to create the new creek according to the engineer specifications. And then we had project managers um, who were managing the project who understood the fish biology and what the stream was um, supposed to do and worked with the engineer but had to make sure that the construction company was doing the right thing. Um, and so all together, we all worked together to build this new stream channel. Now, I think, is it the next one? Okay. I am going to stop sharing for a second and I'm going to show you a video. Let's see if I can do this. Here we go. Okay. Skylar, is that working? Can you see that? I can see it. Okay. Let's see if we can play this. So this is a drone flying over the valley and you can see the restored creek wiggling through the floodplain on the left a little bit right over here. And we're flying over and this is actually, if anybody's taken the highway up to Mount Rainier, this is Mountain Highway uh, as it goes across the Ohop Valley going up to Mount Rainier. So you can drive through here and see the creek on both sides. So the old creek, the ditched creek was over here and the new channel is here. And you can see all these little things here are trees, new trees that have been planted to re-vegetate the forest um, along the floodplain. 
And so there's lots, you know, if, if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in doing, the kinds of things that you want to think about um, are um, uh, geology, water quality, streams, study kinds of things, biology, botany, fisheries. Those are the kinds of topics that you might want to consider looking at, like when you go to college to prepare yourself for doing this kind of work. Some kind of natural resources degree um, is really helpful. So this is kind of fun. Just to we we're this is a virtual tour flying over the valley, um, and you can see the whole whole thing. So let me I'm going to pause this. And I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Okay, so we're going to go to the next one. So like I was saying before, there's other wildlife. So this was a report that was done on that restoration where we hired wildlife biologists who did a bunch of surveys of the valley and looked for signs of wildlife and set up cameras and wildlife cameras and other things. And so they did a whole report showing how, as we restored the creek, it also was affecting wildlife. And so there's an elk herd that's using the restored habitat. The first resident black bear in 55 years started living down there again. So when we help the fish and we help the stream, we're helping all these other things as well. But you know, that's another fun opportunity. Like, you know, if you like to be outside and you like wildlife, there are careers you can, you know, study wildlife biology and people will pay you to help you them figure out how the wildlife is responding to projects like this restoration. Um, so another example, uh, this is the Michelle River, which is on the other side of Eatonville. It's a very important salmon stream uh, as well. And one of the projects that we did, this is another type of restoration project is adding large wood back into the river because it creates really nice habitat for the fish. They can hide under the logs from predators. It creates pools where they can stay cooler. And so they, um, this is someone who works for one of our partner organizations who was checking on these log jams that we um, built as a restoration project. And these were built with heavy equipment. It was, again, it was like, construction equipment. There were excavators. We had to temporarily move the water. It was a really big deal. Um, and But then part of the being a biologist is you get to like then survey afterwards. So we did a big study and looked at fish usage in the river before and after. And this is a picture that one of the biologists took of baby fish. These are baby salmon underneath one of those log jams. So they actually to do this study, they would snorkel in the river, they put on snorkel gear, and they would swim and count all the fish, and they know how to identify all the different fish, and they would snorkel, and they did that before and after the restoration project and in places where we put wood and where there wasn't, and then this is where the science comes in, then they could actually create these bar charts that showed that here's, here's where we did the project, and you can see the big increase in fish usage, this blue bar after we put the wood in is all the fish that we're using, using the wood after we put the wood in. So we saw that actually the fish were actually using the project. So we we're using science to figure that out. So, you know, if you wanted to be a fisheries biologist, you can study fisheries in college and then you can go snorkel in the river and count fish and figure out what's going on. Um, so uh, my, my particular background, so there's lots of different natural resources pathways that will get you to these kinds of jobs. What I, my personal pathway was I went to school, I actually grew up in this watershed also, and I went to Pacific Lutheran University for my um, bachelor's degree and I got two degrees, one in earth sciences and one in environmental studies. And that's when I first started learning about how to work with streams and understand stream ecology. And um, then I decided I really wanted to do restoration work. I wanted to be able to restore plant communities and ecosystems for the health of fish and wildlife and plants. And so I went to the University of Washington to get a master's degree 
where I found a professor who had a lab full of students who were working on restoration ecology. And basically we were doing research on plant communities and how you could restore plant communities successfully to create habitat for the plants and for the wildlife that need those plant communities. So that's my individual pathway. Um, so I have some fun wildlife videos, but I think we're also getting to um, the last 10 minutes. So I think maybe what I'll do is um, I'm just gonna click really quick to show you the pictures. So there's deer, elk, and cougar, and bear. So kind of fun. Oops, too far. So that was, hopefully that gives you guys some ideas about the different kinds of jobs and, and fun things that you can do, um, working to take care of the land and the, and the wildlife. Um, and I'm happy to answer if there's any questions. So um, does anybody have any questions for Jeanette? Okay, we have one. Oh, let's see if I can Okay, see. Um, Soraya asks, what do you enjoy most about your job? Uh, I think the thing I enjoy most about my job is two things. One, being out in these special places um, being able to watch salmon spawning in the river, watching the eagles fly overhead. If we ever get to see the, the deer and the elk and those kinds of things, just connect, there's some really beautiful places. And so being able to do that and to know that we're doing work to take care of that um, is really inspiring to me. So sometimes I can't believe I'm getting paid to do this kind of stuff that's so fun. Um, and also, I think the, the thing I really enjoy is when I see other people who realize um, what, what they can do to help take care of these special places and they get inspired and excited. And, you know, when we have volunteer events, when we have folks out tree planting, um, those are times when uh, I just, I really get excited and I really love it because, um, you know, uh, when people are inspired and they feel like they're doing something that is making a difference. Um, it's really good for everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry I mispronounced your name. Her name was Sarah. I call her Saraya. I apologize. Um, our next question is J.W. Foster. He asks, can you talk about volunteer opportunities with the land trust? Of course I can. So you'll notice I put on this last slide because I will emphasize again, this is a really great way to learn more and get experience. And it really helps you make connections as well with folks that you might get future jobs with. That's how I got my first job um, was from the volunteer work that I was doing. And so you can email us at volunteer at nisqualilandtrust.org if you want to know more about ways that you can volunteer with the organization. We have um, tree planting projects that we do during planting season. And then um, we also do invasive plant removals, um, taking care of the trees and plants that we planted during the, you know, the other seasons, the dry seasons, making sure that they're being taken care of. Um, we also have opportunities for people to basically adopt one of our properties and help us um, keep an eye on it and take care of it. We call that our site stewards program. So people can learn about our property and be able to go out on a regular basis and, and go check on it for us and let us know if they see anything or if there's anything that we need to do. So um, those are a couple of the, of the uh, volunteer opportunities that we, that we have. All right, does anybody else have any questions? Any more questions? Mm. Let's see. Uh, Sylvia asks, what is your favorite animal that you have seen so far? That's tough. You know, um, you know, I, I think it's really special to see the salmon when they're spawning. Uh, that's, when I was doing this as a volunteer, the first project I was involved in with was as a volunteer and I'd never seen salmon spawning before. And the project was able to, to um, allow the salmon to get back to this part of the stream where they hadn't been. 
in quite a few years. And to just sit on the bank and be able to see all these fish like swimming in the stream and kicking up the gravel with their tails and um, and then seeing all the people that came to see that, it was really inspiring. And so I just, when you think about the journey of the salmon, um, what they have to, what they have to survive in order, in order to be able to come back and spawn. It's pretty amazing. You know, they're, they're, they have to survive their initial time in the river, going out into the ocean, avoiding all the predators in the ocean, then swimming all the way back from, you know, some of these fish go all the way up to Alaska and other places. So they swim a long ways and then they come back to Nisqually and they swim up the river and spawn. And so it's, pretty amazing uh, that they're able to make that journey. So I have to say, if I have to pick one, I'd pick the salmon. My second favorite are bald eagles. I love bald eagles. All right, I don't see any more questions. Um, I have a question that I would like to ask you. Okay. Um, so what does your average day of work look like? Like, are you in the office or are you like out working? Yeah, so, uh, when you start at more of the, the um, like some of the jobs in the stewardship program, they are probably out on our properties, uh, either half to, uh, you know, or more than half of the time that they're, that they're working for us. They have like one or two days maybe in the office. Um, when you get up to, you know, being the director of the organization, it's sort of backwards. You get into this work because you love being outside and, and that connection with natural places. And a lot of our work is talking to people, working, you know, trying to get everybody together to work on things that helps you then be successful in taking care of these places. So for me, a lot of my work is working on the computer, work, uh, before the pandemic, going in person to meetings with people to coordinate on things. Now I spend a lot of time in Zoom meetings. Um, we have a board, all nonprofit organizations have a board that they work with of volunteers who provide oversight and set the, the strategy and the policy direction for the organization. And so I spend a lot of time working with our board to support them and make sure that, um, that we know what it is that they have in mind for our long vision for the organization. Um, but I do try and make a point of getting out onto our properties when I can um, and going out and visiting with folks because I don't wanna lose that connection with the, with the core of our work. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's maybe basic description there. All right, thank you. I think I have time for one more question. I'm kind of kind of close here, um, but I want to ask you what led you on this path. Like, what were you in high school, you know, and um, like what led you to your college decisions and everything like that? Yeah. So, I um, I grew up in the watershed. I grew up on a stream that is also one of the tributaries of the Nisqually River. It's called Muck Creek. It's over in the Graham area. And um, I just always loved that place where I grew up. And so I knew that I wanted to do something environmental. When I was a student at PLU, um, our, our environmental studies class studied streams. And, um, and so that was part of how I, I started realizing maybe I wanna work on the stream. And I thought, let me start working on the stream where I grew up. So I started a community group to figure out how we could bring salmon back into Muck Creek where I lived. And that's how I started down that pathway. And through that is how I started meeting other folks that were working on that in the community and making connections that led me to my first job, which was actually with the Nisqually Indian tribe and the salmon recovery program. So I think it was that connection with the natural world and just um, having a love for that, but then realizing that things were changing and that we really needed to be active stewards of this place if we wanted to keep those special places. And I wanted to have the knowledge of how do we do that um, so that I could work with others to make sure that we took care of these places. That, that's really awesome. I like how you knew, like at a young age, you're like, this is what I'm going to do. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. I really liked your presentation. I learned a lot and hopefully the people who participated learned a lot also.